Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. I'm John Gabriel. So um, I'd like to talk about one of the very first videos that I created, and it's called Cauchy's Cluj, and it was this one here. So I've already pulled up the the applet, so you can see it over here. Now, why is this mainstream definition of derivative wrong? Well, it's wrong for many reasons, but one of the reasons is that it assumes that all the finite differences on either side of this point, right, on either side of the point, exist. But now, what would happen if, for example, you had a function like this? Let's get a pen here. Where, where are the pens? Now, this is an old version. So let's get a pen. So let's say you had a function like, oh, why isn't it writing? Like that. And then it went, ooh like that and then like that and then just over here was the point five and then went all the way like that so now uh, over here it's not even smooth okay and it might not even be defined here or here or here or here right so so the stupid cranks of mainstream mathematics academia don't get the point that this this definition here is utter garbage, okay? And of course, it's defined everywhere, by the way, everywhere except everywhere except at the point of tangency, where the point of tangency where it's uh, meant to be defined. Look at that. So if we take the limit of this difference quotient at the point of tangency, the derivative doesn't exist, okay? So this is what I call Cauchy's Cluj. And of course, they define it this way. But by the way, that's also bullshit because I've proved that epsilon and delta are functions of each other. I said it 35 years ago, actually 40 years ago. I still say it and I'm still right, as right as I was 40 years ago. And the morons of mainstream academia are still wrong. Okay. So finally, some of them have accepted that you need to know L and that it's circular and that they have no valid systematic way of finding the derivative. But now, what does this mean? So what it means is really this. In, in a recent video, I talked about my historic geometric theorem and, of course, the Holy Grail, which is explained here. So the Holy Grail says that the secant line slope, which is the slope of this red secant, is equal to the tangent line slope, which is the slope of this green line, plus the difference, which is this 3.07 here, okay? So, so the slope of the difference is given by 3.07 over 4.95, and the slope of the tangent line is given by 4.95 over 4.95, which is 1, right? As expected, because we're taking the derivative at x equals to 1. So now... Uh, then there's the fundamental excrement lemma on Wikipedia, which states that if f of a, that means this point a is defined, then, then and then only do we get the f prime of x plus q of x h. It doesn't say q of x h. It's actually just garbage, but it says q of h, and that you can take the limit and it goes to zero. That's just total crap. But what I'm showing you here now is that this is possible for every smooth function, okay? So you can't just have the derivative there. You have to have it in a continuous interval around the point, okay? Because as I showed you earlier, like with this graph here, okay, this one here, now I've moved it. It, it might not be defined here, here, and then suddenly as you get closer to the point, it might not even be, you know, very smooth around, let's say, a small interval. And then, of course... Even if this is a small interval, which it is a small interval, we'd it would have to be smooth all the way around that point, okay? So in other words, the utter baboons called math professors don't understand that they are assuming that all around this small interval here, and this small interval here, they have defined finite differences. In other words, this this expression here. But the utter imbeciles have never understood calculus, and neither did Newton, by the way. Neither did Newton nor Leibniz. Newton just mucked around in the dark because he didn't understand. He had no clue what it really meant, and neither, neither did Leibniz, okay? Neither did Leibniz. Let me see if I can get rid of this. Delete. And that delete. Okay. Now, 
in the new calculus, this is where I, I realize it from in the new calculus. So in the new calculus, you always have a parallel secant line, okay? So which is always the same as the, the tangent line. It doesn't matter where you are, okay? So the derivative is always defined regardless. Um, so whether you go here or there, it's still defined. But in your bullshit calculus, it's no longer defined because there is no finite difference quotient of this one. What I'm telling you is you cannot express the derivative in terms of f. Do you understand that, you stupid imbecile? And you cannot take the limit of this because this expression here says very clearly that the slope is equal to the tangent line slope. The slope of the secant line is equal to the tangent line slope plus the difference. They are all constants for this particular slope here, okay? They're all constants. Each secant line has its own set of h and that is all that you can say there. You cannot say, oh, let me take the limit, and then suddenly the right, you keep this constant, you get rid of the Q of a, XH, and suddenly the left-hand side, which is a slope or the tangent line, turns into the derivative. Not possible, you morons. Look, do you see what I'm saying? Can't do, all right? So you can only express the, the holy grail that I show you in this video, by the way. Not, no, not this video. In, yeah, no, in, in this video and in another video online, I explained to you how this identity works from my historic theorem, okay? So you get the holy grail from my historic theorem, which was realized, by the way, in turn, from the new calculus. That's right. The historic geometric theorem was realized from the brilliance of the new calculus. That's how I got it. I didn't get it from that fundamental increment bullshit lemma that you find on Wikipedia. No, none of this. This here is totally wrong, okay? So, it says it's a it, it, it is an immediate consequence of the definition of the derivative f prime of a. No, it has to be, if you wanted to say this, you'd have to say it's defined everywhere in a smooth interval around the point. You cannot just choose one derivative. And so the moron Mar Marcus Kleiber says, oh, no, it means f prime. No, 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 no. It says of a function f at a point a. So it doesn't even matter if it didn't say at a particular point a. It would still be wrong because the Maholi Grail theorem states that the secant line, the secant line slope is equal to the tangent line slope plus, plus the difference. All right. Simple as that. There's nothing more to it. So whatever your mainstream professor tells you, he's a moron, okay? Naturally, he's not going to know. And by the way, uh, Newton and Leibniz didn't explain, didn't give a proof of how they found the integral methods. In fact, Leibniz actually pulled a sleight of hand. Now, place a link to that. Not Leibniz, uh, Newton uh, uh, had a sleight of hand in his so-called proof of the, uh, of the area interval. And of course, you can find that if, for example, you go to my site here and, uh, and uh, look at the articles. Okay, let's just look at the articles. One of them here is called, uh, it's quite far down actually, but I do want to show you, so bear with me. Uh, Newton didn't have any proof and it's a brilliant article. Um, I've written many articles, by the way, so be sure to come to my academia.edu site and and read them because they're amazing and they're eye-opening. You'll become brilliant like me. Well, maybe not, but <laughs> yeah, here you go. Was Newton's and Leibniz's method of setting h equal to zero valid? That's one of them. And then another one is that Newton didn't actually provide a proof. Okay, I'm going to find it. And I'm going to put it in the detail section so you can read it. So basically, over 40 years ago, I was right. And I'm still right. What I'm telling you is true. Mainstream academics don't understand calculus, never have. Yes, yeah, they can master the theorems and the methods, but that it's like driving a car. You don't know how the engine works, but you can drive the car, right? Same thing with calculus and with mathematics. You don't understand fractions, but you can do fraction arithmetic. Um, how many more analogies do you need? 
Are you a moron? Hopefully not. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that. My name is John Gabriel, and I'm going to try and produce more videos. I'll see how my eyesight goes. Uh, still got a flickering uh, arc in my left eye. It bothers me a lot. I'm hoping it will go, but it seems like it's going to be a permanent feature. Till next time, folks. Goodbye.